Well, welcome to another edition of Prophetic Perspective. You can tell from where we're sitting today that I'm at the pre-trib conference here in Dallas, Texas with my good friend Mondo Gonzalez of Prophecy Watchers. Mondo, always a delight to be with you. I know that Nathan Jones is jealous he could not be here today. He's on jury duty, but I get the double blessing. So <laughs> oh, thank good. you for joining me. Absolutely. Yeah, it's good to be here. Well, Mondo, okay, we're going to start right off and jump in the deep end. Why Bible prophecy? What attracted you to a study of Bible prophecy? You know, um, I got saved in 1993, and um, my desire really is apologetics. So uh, getting into understanding prophecy at an, at a, as a young Christian, uh, prophecy is one of the ways that shows that the Scripture is true. It, God's the only one that, can, that, that knows the future. Satan doesn't. So in looking at... Um, at revealed prophecy, whether it's Messianic prophecy in the Old Testament being fulfilled, or even future prophecy, I, I began to use it as a way to show, again, the reliability of Scripture and that the Bible is unique. It's the only holy book in the world that, that does that. In fact, in Isaiah 41, God invites the world, bring all the false gods, it's, it's, yeah, bring yeah, forth yeah. your case. And so uh, ever since then, uh, seeing the correlation as well, even back in the 90s, uh, of course, with Israel becoming a nation and other things, I was like, this is all true. And so as a young Christian, it, it was powerful to, to shape my thinking and, of course, to invest my time in, in studying Scripture. Well, obviously we know that, uh, that Peter used Bible prophecy in Acts chapter 2 to bear testimony to the person of Jesus Christ. We know Philip used Bible prophecy to reveal, again, the gospel when he went and met with the Ethiopian eunuch. How has your passion now for Bible prophecy, obviously you work for Prophecy Watchers and you share the good news of Jesus Christ through that venue, but how has it invigorated your own Christian faith and your commitment as a disciple of Christ. You, you know, it's interesting because uh, I spent, you know, basically 20 years pastoring, and um, you know, but uh, but yet I find it um, that the Lord always had me in prophecy anyway. And so, with with all that, you know, I'd always, you know, once a year I would teach a prophetic series, you know, the seven things that are happening in the world, and uh, and I always had an interest. Well, then, of course, when Prophecy Watchers um, called, I'm like, oh. I see why now the Lord was doing all this. <laughs> but to me, throughout the years, again, using that in ministry and for the layperson to help them understand that, hey guys, th we, we are waiting for the Lord's return, that this isn't, this isn't gonna be like this forever, but it's, it helps in, um, to me, it brings also a desire to be ready and a desire to be pure and a desire to be found when the Lord comes to be doing his kingdom work. Yes. And so it, it's very, very practical in my own life but then, of course, to, to teach that as, as a pastor to people say, hey, you know, you want the Lord to be ready and to say, you know, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And so it, it's a, I think it's an impetus for godly living, but also readiness and, and also to be busy until he comes. Yes. We are recording this in the very latter part of 2023. This has been a very busy year with signs of the times multiplying all around. There's been an uptick, I dare say, in interest in signs of the times and the end times. Why is that, and what do you see perhaps as being one of the most important signs that even some Bible teachers oftentimes overlook? I think what, you know, I have a lot of uh, family and friends that are not saved, and so it's interesting that what I see now is with, with the latest thing happening, again, basically a, a, a very, in a, in a minor way, but a second Holocaust uh, in Israel, um, people are asking, is this Armageddon? Is this the end? And so. When you when you see, of course, Israel is always going to be at the center. There's going to be continued trouble all the way, as we know, all the way to the end. I don't expect there to be some some massive uh, peace agreement or or whatever until the Lord the Lord comes back. But so in that regard, I think people over the past few years they have not forgotten uh, that what what happened with COVID and and the tyranny and the, and the lack of of liber and the liberties being taken. And so all, I think what we're seeing now is uh, now we're talking about the, the Chinese pneumonia thing. That's that's it, and it's like being spoon fed. I think one of the challenges, uh, going back to the final thought, there is we need to make sure that we continue to teach discernment mm. because <clears throat> that that is it, Jesus said the first thing he said: "Let no one deceive you." So to, to, uh, if the way that he leads that is reminding us that. With AI, you know, with even quantum, quantum computing, all these other issues, right now, um, we can fake anything anymore. And that's, I think, what we're going to see, the discernment, whether it's somebody uh, being framed 
or just any words that are being, you can have anybody say anything now. And with the ability of, of the, the technology, discernment's gonna be out the window. We're gonna have to stay so close to the word. There will be no peace, whether it's in Israel or elsewhere, until the false peace uh, offered by the Antichrist. Uh, I believe that'll be after the rapture, clearly, when the church is taken out of the way and this, uh, this megalomaniac emerges to, to try to consolidate power and has a solution for the Middle East peace problem. Hey, you can even rebuild your temple. But until then, the world's gonna have trouble. And yet the Lord tells Christians, let not your heart be troubled. I always think that that means externally, there's gonna be trouble all around us, sometimes even impacting us in yep. our lives. Yep. But our hearts should be at peace because our heart is grounded in Christ. Yes. Absolutely. With the there's what I what I find too is that um, again, especially going back to COVID, seeing people like as a pastor, I was pastoring at the time, and watching people in the church become so fearful based on those external things, and and it was like, hey guys, this is where the rubber meets the road as it relates to our faith and what we've internalized. Jesus's words in John sixteen thirty three, you know, you're gonna have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Uh, may my peace be with you. So do, do we really believe that? I think we, we believe it, but these are the opportunities we have to implement it mm. and, and to say, okay, let me just rest in the Lord and the truth of scripture. But yeah, as we get farther and farther along, I, what you said is, is so poignant because I think even times as prophecy teachers, we can look and be a little too eager sometimes to interpret something, like even right now with, with Israel. Oh, this is Psalm 83. Whoa, 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 hold on a minute. We, we don't necessarily know that. Uh, so we have to be careful and not jump the gun because then again, we'll end up having mud on our face if it doesn't turn out the way we think. And then we just have to be super, super careful and cautious. We do, and, and you use the word already, discerning. Uh, what do you think, looking forward to 2024, and we don't claim to be prophets, neither Mondo <laughs> nor myself nor Nathan Jones, but we, we study God's prophetic word. What do you think is a likely next uh, development in the signs of the times uh, in the year to come? You know, there, there's, we, as of right now, it, we can't uh, take off the table, of course, with the things that's happening with Israel right now, as it relates to will, will they then go after Hezbollah? Will Syria become involved? Uh, we see the trifecta of, of Iran and Turkey and Russia and they are already making agreements. To me, one of the, th that is one of the key things because with Erdogan, uh, the, the, the president of Turkey, I remember in the 90s wondering, Turkey was so Western. I mean, th th you didn't have this. And so- And allied with Israel, and relatively. Allied, exactly, oh yeah, they, they, were do, they would do military agreements because again, they're a NATO, mm -hmm. they're still a NATO country. Yeah, well. And so him coming in and, and he, at first he, he, he um, had some solidarity with Israel after uh, October 7th, and then it was like a switch turned. And so that's gonna be a huge thing of whether this leads into uh, the, the really the, the provocations for Ezekiel 38. But, I, so that always has to be there uh, in a sense. But I think moving forward, what we're gonna see, 2024 is an election year. Um, will we have a fair election? You know, what, what will that look like? Will we get another, um, you know, four years of, of the Biden, Bidenomics, <laughs> mm, <laughs> which isn't heaven, working very well. Heaven forbid. So exactly. So you, will, it, it would, will it be Obama 4.0 in that regard? So there's no doubt all the things that we're seeing in our country, um, th those are heading there. They, they, while all these things are going on in Israel, they haven't stopped with um, t trying to take away our liberties. They haven't talked with trying to implement a cashless you know, digital system. I mean, what we're gonna see there, I think, in 2024 is there's a new phrase that that's that's come out is digital public infrastructure DPI and this is they're they're going so fast uh, on trying to get uh, payment exchanges uh, ID um, and just overall control through the digital infrastructure so that is 2024 is going to be a major year because they're already starting it like with the payment systems that fed now and others so we're heading into that. I think if, when we, Lord willing, we won't be here, but if we are a year from now when we're sitting here at the pre-trib, we're gonna go, wow, 2024 was even more crazy than 2023. <laughs> so we're gonna keep saying that, I think. I think we are too. Every year seems to take us to a new height or perhaps a new depth yeah. of, uh, of degradation, of wickedness in the world. 
and more manifestation of the signs of the times. Mondo, I can tell you this, if the Lord tarries, uh, I will be grateful to be co-laboring alongside you and proclaiming His soon coming, but also just encouraging our viewers to stay true to the Word of God, true to Jesus Christ, and obviously if you don't know Him already as Lord and Savior, do not delay. You're not promised yet another day. So study His Word, but come to saving knowledge of Christ today. Mondo, thank you very hey, much. Pleasure. Godspeed.